Hello, YouTube. My name is Shane, and I just got back from a really exciting trip to Laracon US um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Just got back a couple of days ago, and there were a lot of really cool things about um, just being uh, around all the people that you see, all their tweets all the time, and all their packages coming out. And um, it was just super exciting just to be around all those people and the energy that you get from being within that community is just so inspiring. <clears throat> now, a lot of cool things came out at Laracon um, this year, but one of them that I think has gotten a lot of people's attention is native PHP. And as you can see here, native PHP is a new way to build native applications using the tools you already know, which for us Laravel developers, it's going to be a Laravel, um, Laravel application. So while native PHP is currently in an alpha release right now, um, there are some bugs and actually my other computer is not even capable of getting it to work. At least I couldn't figure out some of the things. Um, I couldn't get it to really build uh, actually on my, uh, my um, Mac Studio, but I did get it to work on my MacBook Pro. So I wanted to show everybody a few things that I was able to do and um, just kind of go through the docs a little bit and test things out so that we can see how this is um, performing, not really showing how it works necessarily, but just showing like, you know, how it kind of, we can put some things together. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, while using the, um, we've got the, uh, the docs up here, I'm going to go ahead and just start a brand new Laravel application. So we'll go ahead and do Laravel new native PHP. The other thing that I'm going to be using is um, Livewire. So we'll go ahead and pull that in. Let's go CD into native PHP and we will composer require Livewire. Livewire, it's just kind of like my drug of choice here. There's a, as the docs mentioned, there's like a lot of different ways that you can build any really front end application with any back end technology inside of a Laravel application. Um, to get this to kind of work and, uh, or at least like there's no limits as far as what you're using for the front end. It could have been Vue, React, uh, just vanilla HTML, JavaScript, et cetera. But um, I prefer Livewire. So let's go ahead and play around with that. And then I will go ahead and open that up in PHP Storm. Cool. Um, so let's go through these docs. We'll do this together, okay? Um, let's install it. One of the things that I noticed here on, um, on my MacBook is with some of these next commands, um, things are actually still not, it's just not seeming to work. So I think that there's some sort of environment um, discrepancies, whether that's like an NPM version, a uh, node version, um, or, I mean, I don't think that it's, I mean, my, my MacBook Pro is the older um, Intel processor while my, my studio is um, Silicon, but I don't think that's really what it is because I'm pretty sure Marcel Posiot, who created this is, I hope I said your last name properly. Um, I'm pretty sure he was using Silicon. So um, I know there's some um, dev issues or some environment issues, but I'm not entirely sure what that is. And actually also, um, it looks like uh, since the last time I installed this and started playing with it, he's released another um, a little bump in the versioning. So maybe there's some other bugs have been fixed. So um, just going through the docs, we composer required it. And now we're going to run this command php artisan native install. It's going to ask if we want to install the npm dependencies, which we do. Now that's going to take a minute. It's not showing any kind of status indicator here, but that's going through and downloading a lot of the uh, NPM modules that we're going to need to make Electron work with inside of our Laravel application. And there we go. And you want to start now. So let's actually just see if this works. And we'll cross our fingers. We'll wait for just a minute. You can see it's fetching latest dependencies and see if it just kind of spurs up or if we get any errors. 
Hey, looks like it's working. Check that out. All right. So we've got like some um, some kind of uh, console showing up here, which I'm not entirely sure why. The last time I was playing with this, again, on that 0 0.1.0, I wasn't seeing this. So um, not entirely sure. But nonetheless, we're going to ignore that for now. We're not building anything for production today. I uh, just wanted to take you through some things. And honestly, just to get things kind of rolling, um, and I'll be playing around with some things that I haven't even played with yet on this um, on this uh, video. But um, yeah, we'll just go back to the docs and and take a look around and see. It did look like there was an error there, didn't it? Yeah, interesting. Okay, so obviously it's not keeping it from working, but um, there are some. You know, again, it's it's a. Uh, it is a alpha release. So we're not gonna put too much stock into it right now. We're just going through the concepts of what this is and how, how it's kind of put together. Um, one of the things that I've seen some other people on YouTube uh, or on Twitter um, do something kind of similar to this. And I think that, um, you know, being at Laracon um, and seeing Marcel's uh, demo himself, it kind of gave me a little bit of an edge as far as like how this is put together, or at least how um, he started doing the demo and some different things. Uh, the docs may not be so super clear as to like how you're supposed to be putting things together. And I'll explain that. Um, so we'll go into like Windows, okay? Windows are just that. So when you click this, this is a window, right? It's got a size, it's got a position, it's got um, content inside of it. And um, we can do some really cool things with Windows. One of the things that we're going to do, though, is take a look in. I wanted to see where it's talking about this. Yeah. The native application lifecycle. So while this isn't really the focus of this, um, I did want to point out that native PHP boots your application by running the boot method on your native app service provider. It also broadcasts a um, an event, dispatches an event, um, which we're not going to play with right now. We're not going to do too much with the events here, but um, yeah. So it's created this native app service provider. So let's go into inside of our um, app directory providers, and we'll see this native app service provider. And we can see this is kind of like that start code, right? Um, for making all this work. So you can see like, this is just a stub that came from the package that was put here. You can see that we have this window opening. It's got a width of 800 by 800. Uh, it seems to default to the um, slash route. So just like the um, the entry of your, of your application. So um, if we go to web, we can see that's just return this view welcome, which is the, the standard, you know, Laravel, um, application from start, right? Um, but we can see that there's some other things here. So it's got this menu, it's creating a new menu, an app menu, a sub menu, sub menu. We can see that if we click on this, we have this menu up here. So we have about, and here's that beyond code and Simon Hamp. And you can see that those are actually coming from uh, this stuff right here. So inside of this sub menu, um, and then there's this other sub menu called view. And so again, if we click on this, we can see view and we can toggle full screen and we can learn more and all that is coming right from here. So I would venture to think if we created another sub menu called test and we can look at, you know, some other functions that, that we can run here in a moment, but um, that's pretty cool that it gives you just a, a shortcut method here for toggling the full screen and then a separator uh, so let's get rid of those and we'll just put um, chainrosenthal.com. Learn about chain. And it gives you this uh, third parameter for a hotkey, which we're not going to do right now. We'll play around with that in a little bit. But um, because this is set up for live hot reloading, we can. Um, it's just reloading it. And you can see now we have this test, learn more about Chain, and that should open in the browser my website, which is really cool. Um, just right out of the box, it's, it's, it's ready to go and ready to run um, just like that. 
Um, but like I said, let's go back to, to window. And um, while we're here, we can set some defaults for window. Um, so like, like it's already got, um, you know, the width and the height, but maybe you don't want it to be um, sh able to be shrunk down. Like you can go all the way down to this, right? That's not a good app experience, um, obviously. So we can do like min, min height, min width. So let's look here. Minimizable, minimized events, which is really cool. So let's go min width and min height here. And we'll go ahead and set these attributes, these functions and save. And that's going to reload. And we can see now it will actually not go any smaller than this size. Perfect. Um, we always, we, we can also do this um, always on top. I think that's the function. And now um, if I'm working on an application and I want to be able to code at the same time, I believe, yeah, I can come back here, go to the code and jump back and forth. And it's uh, always gonna remain on top. So we've got that shortcut method as well, which is really helpful. Um, we also can do stuff like position. And again, this is all in the docs and I'll be referring back to the docs here in a moment, but um, position allows you, and let's actually see what that does. Position. Yeah, see, I don't like it jumping right in the middle of the screen here, right? So let's position. Let's try this 100 by 100. I'm sorry, it's not 100 by 100. It seems to be like an XY coordinate. So it should be always on top. And now it's, yeah, it looks like maybe an offset. Um, wonder if we put like, if zero, zero is all the way to the top, what would be, maybe the docs mentioned this. So sure. And next Y. wonder if we put like negative one, negative one, if that's going to like put it on the right side, I am sure if we do zero, zero, it's going to be the top left, right? Yeah, all the way in the top left. Maybe. No, that didn't seem to do it. Um, let's do like a really big number then. How about just like 5,000, 5,000 or 5,000, zero. X 5,000, that's all the way to the right. Let's see if that works. And it's all the way on the top. That works for me. Um, I also want this to be just for this, um, just for this little demo, let's make this smaller. Let's make the width like 200 and the height, we'll make it like 300. And we'll make the min 200 and the height 300. So now you really can't resize it basically. Cool. All right. So I'm cool with that. Again, I'm not really worried right now, at least about like the content inside. We'll be getting to that though in a second. So um, actually, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We'll go 400 by 500. Yeah. Okay. I could work with that. So cool. So we have this little app and now as we're reloading, it's going to stay here on top and I can write code and uh, every time I save my code, it's going to pop up here and I can start building an actual native application. So cool. Um, there's also this remember state, which I also think was really cool. And this was um, something that Marcel demoed. Um, so remember state will, um, will know if you've moved the position of the application, if you resize it at all. Um, and then uh, let me just like force the... Let's put this down here. Let's just like put an enter here or something. This will force the um, reload and it should it should appear back over here in this size. Uh, actually, the first time was telling it to remember the state. So let's go ahead and just move this over here. And um, now if we do, let's see what it does. Perfect. Yep. And it should do the size as well. So I'll just put an enter here, save, and it should... Perfect. Exactly what you would expect. It's remembering the last state that it was in as far as at least for as far as I can tell the position and the um, 
the size of it. And then there's also that other um, that other method we just saw down here, which is resizable and set that to false. So we can make make it so that it's just not resizable, and that way we can't um, we can't ever move it around. So perfect. Cool. So now that we've got this window open um, and we've played around a little bit with the um, the menu, which I'm not even sure what app menu does. One of the things that I had a hard time with, and we're going to skip for now, is the menu bar. Um, so menu bar is up here. Um, this is your menu bar on a Mac. Um, this is where there's like, I've got herd um, kind of running right now. And so you, you, you're supposed to be able to get your application to be run as a menu bar, at least have a menu bar option, windows opening up inside of it, et cetera. Um, we're not doing that right now uh, because I couldn't get it to work. Uh, we could play around with it though, maybe on another video, if I can, if I can get some success going with it, you know, that'd be pretty cool. So this is, um, this doc menu is something that I was looking at as well. So the doc menu is if you have an app that's running uh, inside and you can see it within your doc. So that means you, you can have menu bar exclusively menu bar applications like herd. You can click on something to open it up, but you don't see the herd application running in the doc, right? You don't see it in my doc, the herd um, application. We see it up here. And if we wanted to go into any settings or anything, we would get to it um, through this menu bar icon. Um, since we have currently at least um, this application set up as a you know a window and it is in the dock, this dock can have its own menu and I'm pretty sure um, now these none of these events are wired up at all yet but you should be able to like right click and go to like settings or help about learn more etc. Like I said, these are not um, these are not wired up currently, but I'm pretty sure if we do another one like, Again, test, that's going to refresh. And now if I right click, we should have this test here. And so we can hook into that event. And um, in another video, we'll get into like um, event listeners and seeing, you know, if something, if this, if this is triggered, then um, firing off an event that will open up another window altogether. So I think that's pretty cool the way that that's kind of working especially because it's Laravel and we're all in the Laravel community, we already know how most of these things work. So you should know how events and listeners work anyway. So it's really just giving you all this added functionality with literally like the same knowledge that you've already got, just adding another um, API or library to, um, to your repertoire and now you can build native applications. So really, really cool. Um, Let's go ahead and let's sub out. Let's make a let's make a live wire component and we'll set that to the root. And yeah, so let's go ahead and stop this. And we will let's go um, PA for me as PHP artisan. PA live wire make. And let's make a like a um, home page. Um, I've already started the repo, so I'm going to say no to that. And if we go to web, let's make this home. And let's go ahead and run this again. So instead of um, PHP Arson native install, we can do serve. And that should get everything running and give us our home. Cool. So uh, it's it's going to squawk right now because we did not set up LiveWire locally. Um, LiveWire does look for a layouts.app.blade.php or layouts.app.blade.php. So we'll go into resources, views, and we will go into, we'll make a new directory called layouts. And we'll do another file called app.blade.php. And we'll, right now, we'll just do nothing for it. Um, or, you know, what we could do, let's go ahead and go to this welcome. And I'm not going to 
take the time right now to pull in like all of Tailwind, um, which I would normally do, and I probably will in another video again, but um, let's just bring in some of this CSS over here. We'll plop this in here. And instead of this whole body, let's delete that and we can put our slot. And then if we go back into this live wire component that we created, we should be able to say this is the home component. Cool. So let's stop that and we'll restart it. Um, just then when I saved it, it didn't do the hot reload. So we'll just do that. So cool. There we go. This is the home component. Perfect. Um, now we also should be able to, well, in a number of ways, right? So we can do, um, we can do just an href on an anchor tag equals, um, about, or let's do a route about. And let's make this go to about page. Let's go ahead and let's put this in a P tag. So we got some separation again, not focused right now on UI at all. And it's kind of interesting. Saving my live wire component is not in fact updating. And maybe that makes sense. Maybe because it's only looking at certain files and not specific directories for the hot reload. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll go back to web and we're going to create a new um, route. We'll call this about, and this is going to go to an about. So let's go to, let's do PHP artisan live wire make about. And so now that we've got that, we can do about, and let's give this a name of about. Perfect. Cool. And then if we go in here, we can say this is the about page. Let's go ahead and serve that. We'll see what happens. All right. So if we go to about page, that does take us to the about page. Another way that we could handle that is, again, we have the full live wire slash, like a tall stack basically inside of this. So we could have a method that we do this in with the um, native PHP library instead. So let's go back to the, um, let's go back to home and we'll do like a button. And this will trigger a live wire uh, click function and click equals go to about um, and we'll say go to about via um, native native um, API. Now this function doesn't exist so we're going to have to define that on our on our home. Cool. And let's refer back to the native PHP docs. And I believe, I think there's a route. Yeah, so we can do this window open and it can be another, a different size altogether. And we can actually use some of those same functions. Cool. So let's go, um, let's pull this in and we'll import the class. This should be the facades, the native Laravel facades window. And it's going to open, this is going to be called about. The route is about, no type ending there, which is interesting. Uh, and we'll do like 300 by 300. Again, I don't want to take up my whole, my whole window here. But now this should... And I'm just going to give this a hard refresh on the app and let's see what this does. And we might need to add actually like, let's see. Yeah, I would like that on another line, even though it probably will work just fine. Let's just do a break. Cool. And again, that's not refreshing, which I don't know. 
love, but um, we can deal with it for now because you know what? As of like two days ago, I couldn't even build native apps. So <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Um, go to about via native API. So let's see if that works. Interesting. It did not work. Um, let's see if that function is even firing. It should be. So on the home, let's just like, let's dine up. Hello. Is this doing it? Hmm. Let's restart it. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? That is a button. Hmm. Interesting. So I was playing with this not long ago, and that was totally working. Um, but it's not now. Let me pause this for a minute and see if I can debug real quick and come right back to you guys. Okay, so I forgot to include the Livewire assets. I was playing with Livewire v3, which is still in beta, I believe. Um, and you're not, uh, you don't need to require um, adding Livewire styles and at Livewire scripts in your um, layout um, for v2, which I just did a Livewire Livewire composer require. Um, so that um, means I'm on v2 still instead of the latest. Um, so this should work. I didn't try it in the app, but I was trying it locally, which is, again, pretty cool because you can just do like native php.test locally. And I can see I added uh, like some other stuff here just to make sure that we have the two-way binding and we do. So um, now let's go and let's get rid of that. And if all goes well, let's go ahead and restart the application and see if we are now able to use these tests. Well, I thought I, interesting. Why do you think that's like an old state? Let's stop that. Hmm. It seems to be like caching an older state of the application, which is strange. I would think stopping it and restarting it would not cause that. So it's complaining um, this. So let's just go back ourselves. Maybe, maybe it didn't like Dom diff or something, which is kind of strange again, because it's within the same um, like we restarted the application, right? So let's try this. Let's put that variable back and see if it's still complaining. And it's not crazy. All right. Well, um, again, it's kind of buggy still. And that's even, that's really, actually, that's a really good example of like an issue here because I did not, I don't think I did. Yeah, I don't even have that input here anymore so let's like what if i add a div just to wrap all this stuff in will that do enough like dom diffing to tell it that it's updated no weird so it still thinks that this is here and it's clearly not interesting well let's see if this works anyway and it does. So that is kind of what we were really going for, but we're seeing some other issues here as well, which is why, again, it's alpha and, um, you know, it's going to it's going to have some issues for a while. But um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a starter of like how to get a, a native PHP application up and running um, some of the quirks with it and um, some of how to use the defaults, um, like setting the size and position and um, making it always on top, et cetera. Um, once you have like the base, the basics of this up and running, um, you can go through the library, I'm sorry, the, the docs and just take a look at everything that's that it's able to do. Um, I'd like to put out a video if I can get the menu bar to work 
um, as well as like some um, notifications and event handling uh, listeners and all that stuff. So I'll be playing with that for now. And hopefully I'll have another video coming out for you guys here pretty shortly. Have a great day.